as you board, please move across your car to make room for everyone and kindly offer available seating to those needing special assistance. If you're standing, please hold on to the handrails and stay clear of the doors. They will be closing in a moment. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Disney Assembled. I'm Troy. And I'm Mimi. And we are your happy little father-daughter podcast, here to create joy and share our love for all things Disney. Disney Assembled is sponsored by our patrons over on Patreon, Renta, Danny, Connie, and Andrew. Yeah, thank you guys so very much. You can join them too by going to our website, DisneyAssembled.com, and click on the Become a Patron button. You get access <laughs> to many patron-only exclusive extra content yes for example we just made an extra little podcast we did, we did an episode, episode. Yeah, yeah, like we, two days ago or so whatever. if you want to hear our thoughts on secret invasion and why elemental may not be doing as well at the box office as people predicted and so forth head on over to our patreon page and join up there for as little as two dollars a month you get access to all that extra content but if you're looking for even more wonderful disney magic to bring into your life you need to check out Magic of the Mouse Radio. Disney Assembled is so proudly part of the Magic of the Mouse Radio family, where you get the best Disney music 24 7, 365. Head on over to our website, Magic of the Mouse Radio.com, or you can go to our website, DisneyAssembled.com. Click on the Magic of the Mouse Radio icon there. Our show it plays on Magic of the Mouse Radio every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. In addition to being a part of the Magic of the Mouse radio family, I am honored and proud to, and excited to be a part of the Magic of the Mouse news family. Magicofthemousenews.com has articles for anything and everything Disney related that you might want to read, including some written by me. I just had one published about The Little Mermaid and Halle Bailey, and all of you should go check it out. Yeah. Magicofthemousenews.com. All right, there you go. Plenty of ways for you to get all your Disney stuff in every day, right? Yeah. All right, Mimi, anything going on you want to talk about before we jump into this episode or and explain no. what our main topic is? We're, 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 we're going recently, to be assembling something else this week, right? We are going to be assembling something else this week. So we're going back to that after our week off from our assembling. Um, what's up with me? Um, I'm recently have gotten into Five Nights at Freddy's and now I can't stop thinking or talking about it. Like learning about the lore behind this game is like watching Gravity Falls for the first time. and. It's fascinating. Like, I, I knew I would love it, which is why I avoided it for so long, because I knew it would become an obsession the way Harry Potter was, was the same thing. Um, and now I'm obsessed and want to spend $100 on a Balloon Boy Funko Pop because I love Balloon Boy. He's just so useless. <laughs> like, I just love him. Yeah. He's yeah. just so funny. Have I played the games? No. Am I going to go see the movie? No, because I can't handle violence or jump scares. But the lore is fascinating mm -hmm. so that's what's up with me all right very good yeah why don't we tell everybody what this week's main topic of the week is and then we'll jump into the rest of the episode yeah okay so we're like i said we're going back to reassembling and we're gonna be reassembling fantasy land we're, so we're, we're assembling it assembling yeah, yeah we're, sorry we're my, assembling bad. Fantasy land. my bad reassemble is the name of our patreon podcast go check it out patreon.com so assembling fantasy land this one could be big because this is a big part of magic kingdom right it is um, I'm very excited, but we can't jump right into it yet, obviously. Right. So we're going to assemble Fantasyland this week. Yes. We're going to go through Disneyland and Disney World. We'll go through all of our normal stuff, some tips, some tricks, some fun facts, you know, and just talk about it in, in the way we did the last two times where we yeah. did Adventureland and Tomorrowland, right? Yes. Yep, we did that. And so we're going to jump into Fantasyland today. So we have that. Lots of fun. Good conversation planned out for everybody out there. We hope they enjoy it. Uh, but before that, we do need to have this week's Disney Dad Joke of the Week, which, by the way, was submitted by one of our followers over on Instagram. Oh, what So I want to give a shout out to <laughs> Sophia Smith for sending us a message where she actually 
offered two jokes for this week. One of them we've already used on the show, so we're not going to repeat it. We're going to use the one that we have not yet used okay. on the show. So it's like we say every week, if you have a joke you want us to consider using, send it to us. And Sophia did that, and we are very, very appreciative of that. So Sophia, if you're listening, thank you so much for submitting a joke. We're going to use your joke. All right, you ready to jump into it? Yes. All right, guys, it's time for this week's Disney dad joke of the week. Oh, boy. Mimi. Which yes. Disney princess is the funniest? I don't know. Rapunzel. <laughs> That's a good one. It? Rapunzel, because yes. puns are funny. Yeah, yes, yeah, there I like that one. There you go. There That's you go. That a one. good one. Thank Sophia. you, Sophia. Yeah, thank that. you for submitting that one. Very good. Much better than the one I had maybe prepared to use just in case we didn't get one submitted. So thank you for yeah. submitting that and saving everyone's ear balls from one of my, okay. one of my options. So guys, if you have a Disney dad joke that you'd like us to consider using on the show, do what Sophia did. Send us a message on social media. She sent it to us on Instagram, but you can also send it to us through Facebook. You can send it to us through Twitter, TikTok, or even TikTok. All of them, all of them very easy and to remember at Disney itself, which just happens to be the title of, of this, this podcast, show. of this yeah. podcast, right? You can also Amazing send how us that an works, email, right? you do, Disneyassembled at gmail.com. See, we have it Look everywhere. It's everywhere. It's Disney easy Disneyassembled to remember. at gmail.com. It's the easiest thing to remember. It's amazing that all of those things were available when we went to it's use It's crazy them. that y'all keep getting it wrong. Like, it's, come on, guys. Right. Disney Assembled. Not that hard to keep track Disney of. Disney Assembled. Yeah, there it is. It, it, it's, we are, um, you know, we're rapidly. I think you've be been sending your messages to Disney. Somebody else. Somebody Assembled. else. Assembled. I don't know. Assembled has two S's in it. Don't don't be afraid to do A S S E M B L E D. Right. It's not a bad word because you have the rest of the word there. Right. So there you go. Heck yeah. Disney Assembled. All right. Fantasyland. Yes. We need to jump into it. But before we do that, you know, we started our other assembled episodes with uh, you having an opportunity to just sort of describe in your own words what fantasy land is so how would you describe fantasy land to someone who doesn't know anything about disney parks yeah okay so fantasy land is where everything that is that has stepped right out of a fairy tale book you know comes to play princesses and fairies and just all these sort of like magical mystical like What's it called? Magical realism that like just very sort of pink and fluffy and excited and princesses. And this is a really terrible description, but it's very like it, I think it, it very much stays true to like, quote unquote, classic Disney, um, where you've got your sort of um, iconic staples um, attractions for these movies are going to be seen in Fantasyland. But you're also going to see a whole lot of princesses in Fantasyland, a whole lot of um fairies a whole lot of just general character interactions in fantasy land it's also the biggest land in both parks i think i think that's right definitely we'll talk about in the California. Size because certainly we'll talk about when we do our our um, fun facts we'll talk about the size of fantasy land especially in in florida at right. Disney world so here's how i would describe fantasy land i didn't do a very good job because I, I think you did a fine job i don't know how to capture that whimsical like that's okay. That you, it has. You did a fine job. You shouldn't, you should not fret at all. Okay. Your description. <laughs> I said don't fret in the car with both my parents and now they can't stop. Saying. So here is, here's my sort of explanation of fantasy land. There is a sign when you enter the magic kingdom, I think at Disneyland, maybe it meant both. I think it's at both. And the sign is, says basically here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. Fantasy land to me is the perfect marriage between the popular content of sort of the golden age of Disney content creation and Walt's vision of a place where both children and parents could go and enjoy themselves and be at a park where both parents and kids could have fun and sort of where parents and adults could be kids. Right. Right. 100%. And I think that is what fantasy land really is. I think it's the perfect marriage of those things. There is plenty of 
I would say the golden age of Disney IP available in fantasy land. There is um, plenty of, of classic rides in fantasy land. And I think it is sort of that place where, and this may enter into our tips and tricks areas, but I would say it, it appears from, from my view, it is the place where families with young kids seem to be able to enjoy themselves the most. That's my description of fantasy land. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. So, all right. So we, we mentioned the tips and tricks. So why don't we jump into our tips? Yeah. Okay. I'm so, I sounds good. I'm excited. All right. Tips. Because, yeah. So fantasy land, I think is arguably the most crowded, most difficult park to tackle um, because of what you said about small families or families with small children. Right. The families themselves aren't necessarily small. They could be small, right. but, <laughs> but, but a lot of I, small children, lots of small children. And because a lot of strollers, right. Because it's these big ticket attractions because of the classic IPs and the classic characters, it's going to be super crowded in fantasy land. Right. And so my, I think my first tip is to either hit it early in the morning, like, first thing before everyone gets there or wait to do it until fireworks or in the evening because i will say fantasy land the kind of rolling in my second tip um fantasy land during the fireworks is very nice if you just stand behind the castle in fantasy land by mine train at least in um florida you get a really unique view of the fireworks and i will say that it's it's nice yeah. um, from there. So those are my my two tips that I have off the top of my head. So I would say that also along those same lines, if you are traveling with small children, this is a good area to rope drop your day. If you're planning to do rope drop, it's uh, Peter Pan. If you have small children and you're intending to spend a lot of time in fantasy land, Peter Pan is a good attraction to rope drop. Yeah, for sure. If you have small children, you know, obviously if you're older and you don't need to do Peter Pan first thing in the morning, you're not worried about it or you, you can do it during fireworks when it's the line really isn't all that long. Right. Um, it's a good time. But you have little kids. If you're there at rope drop, Peter Pan is probably a good one to get to as early as possible because yeah. the line there does get really Peter Pan long. or honestly, um, mine train. If you're in Florida, those are the two big ones, but mine trains queue does fill even at rope drop. And mine train is not a ride for everyone, right? Some right. little kids can't get on mine train because it's, I mean, it's not the most thrilling coaster in the it's world, but it is a coaster. coaster and it, you know, some kids just aren't ready to do coasters yet. Yeah. Another tip I have is if you're going to do the, uh, mad tea party, mm -hmm. Um, don't eat or drink immediately before that because, <laughs> no. and, and really you have to know how to manage the spinning rides if you're going to do mad tea party. So little tips, you know, try to focus on one particular object as you're spinning around, you know, uh, or don't spin the, the, the wheel as fast as it possibly can go. Um, but I enjoy mad tea party to an extent. Um, but there's a tip there. It's not, it's not a ride for everyone, but there's plenty to do there in fantasy land. Fantasy land does, like I said before, lots of strollers, especially in the magic kingdom. Right. Um, so you do have to navigate that a little bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a good land. It's a big land. We'll talk about the size of it when we get to our, you know, fun facts, but that's really the only tips I have for fantasy. Land. It's a good place for small children it's a good place for fireworks and so forth. I have a question for I you about Fantasyland, though. Okay. Do you consider the castle part of Fantasyland? Yeah, I, I'd say so. I, I do, too. I fall, in the, I fall in the category of the castle being sort of the uh, entryway into Fantasyland. I think in general debates about, like, the quad, the center circle, the castle. I think, to be brutally honest, I think they are so silly. Like, it literally doesn't matter at all. Like, if you think the grass outside of Tomorrowland is a part of Tomorrowland, or if you think the statue of Walt and Mickey is a part of Main Street versus a part of Fantasyland or whatever. Like, I just, I don't think that matters as much, but because of the nature of what Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty's castle are because of that fantasy princessy thing um i think i would have to rope them into fantasy land especially because they open out directly into fantasy land like mm. if you just walk straight through them 
you get to Fantasyland. You don't get into Adventureland or Liberty Square or New Orleans Square or Tomorrowland. You're in Fantasyland. So right. I would have to say definitely Fantasyland. Um, I have something else to say, but do you have anything to say on the, no, ca- on the go. castle? I'm sorry. Yeah, go I think my final tip for Fantasyland is, is if you want somewhere to eat in Fantasyland, don't. Don't eat in Fantasyland um, because there isn't a whole lot of, and I, I should have said this in the Tomorrowland episode too, but there isn't a whole lot of variety of food in Fantasyland. Um, it's all kind of the same. Um, and a lot of the restaurant or food places tend to lead more towards like snacky foods. Like Gaston's Tavern doesn't actually give you lunch. It's not going to give you nuggets. It's going to give you that really good cinnamon roll, right? You can get flatbread at Pinocchio's Village House. Um, which is, it's okay. But man, other than but, Pinocchio's yeah. there, I don't think there are a whole lot of other places to eat in Florida that are quick that aren't Cinderella's castle or Belle's castle. And right. those are, I do recommend Belle's castle. Those are meals that are worth it, but are extremely expensive. So like, if you're looking just, Hey, it's noon, we're hungry. Leave Fantasyland, go eat somewhere else. Yeah, you can um, just take a walk in the, you yeah. go to Cosmic Rays, or, which is not far from there. And, yeah. Like, Pinocchio's is super cute, but not a whole lot of variety there, right. I will say. Um, if, but if you walk, like, 200 feet in any direction, you will get a fast food place that can feed all four, or all five, or all six, or all, you know, 19 right. of you if you're the Duggars. <laughs> No comment. All On right. our college road trip, we went by their house. It was insane. It was so cool. I was like, oh, wow. I don't know how cool it is. But <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. It yeah. was really funny. We were in Fayetteville touring University of Arkansas. Anyway, so right. that, those are my my last tips for Fantasyland. Cool. Don't eat there. All right. So Fantasyland and Disneyland, Fantasyland and Disney World are very different. Yes. Uh, they have some very different attractions there. They have some attractions that are somewhat the same, but also but very different. And I do think we should go through maybe the differences and the attractions, maybe give people yeah. a sense of what's all there. In case I can they also know. just read the list. So there are four more attractions in Disneyland, California, than there are in the Magic Kingdom. And you got Disney these World. directly from the Disney website, correct? I got these from like some travel website, but they are mostly updated from what I'm looking at. Okay. Okay. Because I don't think anything new appeared in Fantasyland. Um, Let's go through the okay, list me, of them, so and then we'll talk about the ones. In California, we've got Alice in Wonderland, The Dark Ride, The Bippity Boppity Boutique, which, you know, the Casey's, Casey Jr. Circus Train, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Fantasy Fair, It's a Small World, The King Arthur, Ferrisa, King Arthur Carousel, Mad Tea Party, Matterhorn Bob Sleds, Mr. Toad's Wild, Wild Ride, <laughs> Peter Pan's Flight, Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Pixie Hollow, which I don't think exists anymore. Um, right? I don't I don't know. I don't remember. The Sleeping Beauty Castle, the Sleeping Beauty Castle Walkthrough, Snow White's Enchanted Wish, Storybook Land, Canal Boats. So let's focus on the ones that are ride attractions. Like so let's leave the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique out and let's leave you know, some of those things. The castle, fantasy fair, yeah. Right. But Any show or ride. Let's focus on those. Like Pixie Hollow is just a, a but meet I love and greet. Pixie Hollow. Right. But like, okay, so obviously, let me just read the Florida ones and then we can go jump back to California. Okay. okay. In Disney World in Florida, we've got the Barnstormer, Cinderella Castle, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Enchanted Tales with Belle, It's a Small World, Journey of the Little Mermaid, Mad Tea Party, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Peter Pan's Flight, Prince Charming Regal Carousel. Princess Fairytale Hall, Seven Doors Mine Train, Winnie the Pooh. So immediately there's a drop off, right? Like the, the attractions in California are vastly different than the ones in Florida. And I think the only overlaps are Dumbo, Mad Tea Party, and Peter Pan. I it's think. a small world to, to it's a an small extent. World. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And the carousel. But I mean, it's that's a carousel. It's a different carousel, but yes, but it's a carousel nonetheless. So they're in Disneyland. I think there's maybe not as maybe not more variety because it's a lot of um, dark ride attractions versus like Disney World's more like. Like there's like coasters in Fantasyland in Florida and, you know, all these other things um, outside of just boats and dark rides, but there is more to do in California. What do you think? I, I think California does a great job 
with managing the available space to pack a lot into fantasy land yeah. in California. So it, I think it does a wonderful job of using space and Imagineers designing that space really, really well. Disney world has much more space to use and has some rides that just take up more space. You know, the seven doors mine train takes up a lot of room, you know, yeah. building, uh, that area with Gaston's uh, tavern and and the bells, uh, the beast's castle for the restaurant. I mean, those take up lots of space. But Matterhorn bobsleds doesn't take up as much space as Seven Doors Mine Train. Well, it does. Both. It's just it's just built different. I just right. think like Disneyland has a very compact sort of um, design layout, and Florida is very spread out, although still rem- keeping you know packed um but i think like the quality of the rides at both Mm -hmm. hold up um well let's go through let's let's start in disneyland are there any on your list like i don't want to do must do's because you know everything on that list is something i would love to do right maybe what are your top three disneyland fantasy land attractions if you had to name three what would be your top three my three my top three in California Disneyland, I think, okay, being put totally on the spot here. I think Alice in Wonderland, Matterhorn Bobsleds, and I, I guess Peter Pan's Flight. Or no, Mad Tea Party. It's definitely Mad Tea Party. I've grown a deep appreciation for the Mad Tea Party on our last, oh, excuse me, few trips to, um, Orlando and it's you know the same ride vehicle. So I I think in the correct order would be Matterhorn, Tea Party, Alice in Wonderland. Looking just at the ride attractions in Disneyland, I would include Alice and Matterhorn Bobsleds in mine. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That's I, a weird I, choice. I like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I think it's cool. It's a good it's one of my top favorite dark rides. Along with Alice in Disneyland, which is probably my favorite dark ride. Yeah. Is Alice in Disneyland. What about in Florida? All right, in Florida. All right, I'm looking at your list and, you know, taking into account, I would say probably, hmm, I'm going to say Peter Pan's Flight. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Winnie the Pooh, because I just enjoy getting on that with you guys. And probably my third favorite, I'm going to go with Dumbo. Okay. I have something about Dumbo. I like getting on Dumbo and flying around the elephant. Those okay. would be my top three. Yeah. Okay. Fun fact. Last time we went to Florida, we were in line for Dumbo and we didn't know that like you had to go in that disgusting playground, like to wait in the line. And my mom was like talking to the cast member. She wasn't rude. She was just like, can you give us our chip? And we go like stand in line like we don't really want to go in there with all those sticky children and he was like well unfortunately like we require all families to go into the playground and my mom was like but i don't have small children like what if you get to like a couple that like wants to ride dumbo but all of a sudden they're stuck in this playroom with these you know restless kids and the guy was like he was very polite my mom was polite too but she was obviously like i really don't want to do that um which I think is funny. I didn't know that they like made you do that until we got there. Definitely disappointing. But we ended up going back on Dumbo during like the fireworks or something. It was really nice. Totally made up for that weird experience. Cool. Okay. My top three in Orlando really quick are definitely Seven Doors Mine Train. Under not underrated. I can see how people would think it's overrated, but I love it. I don't I don't care. Like I would wait two hours for it. Um Winnie the Pooh for sure. And then I think Mad Tea Party again, but it could also be um, Little Mermaid, which is like kind of a hot take. But I've recently gained some good memories with you on Little Mermaid because no one else wants to write it, which is valid. So you and I go do it. And we're like, every time we get off it, we're like, this is really underwhelming. Why did we wait in line for this? Like, um, <laughs> or Peter Pan's Slide. But it's definitely a toss up for that third spot. But Seven Dwarfs, Winnie the Pooh, stuck. Cool. All right. Before we talk about whether Fantasyland is better at day or night, I thought I'd go through some fun facts that I found out about Disney. Okay. About, about Fantasyland. Sounds good. Disneyland, Fantasyland. 
And you can find these online. You know, I just did a quick search, fun facts. I found these pretty interesting. The oldest attraction is housed in Fantasyland in Florida. The Prince Charming Regal Carousel was okay. actually built in 1917. That's Did crazy. You know that? 1917. Oldest attraction. That's crazy. There are actually, I didn't know this. I did not know this. There are actually, I believe, two hidden Oswald the Lucky Rabbits located in Fantasyland. So in for those of you who know, California? Oswald this is in Florida. Okay. Oswald was Walt's first big sort of main hit cartoon, but then it was, you know, stolen from him. And then he, you know, Disney ended up buying it back later on, blah, 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 blah. I say stolen. He lost it because of a contract thing. Um, but there are two. One is located in the front of the entrance to Enchanted Tales with Belle. There are three stones on the ground that have a likeness of Oswald's head with his ears. The second you can see on Seven Dwarves Mine Train. So if you, when you pass Doc on the ride, carved into the log, uh, a log of wood, you can see Oswald carved in the log of wood. You got to look real fast though. Right, go by pretty quick. That's really cool. I need to look this up while you're talking so I can look at it. Here's another fun fact about Fantasyland. Originally, Fantasyland was about 10 acres in Disney World in Florida. But they did their big expansion back in, you know, the new Fantasyland opened in 2012. It was completed Whoa. in 2014. It is now 21 acres. It more than doubled in size. 21 acres. It's huge. Lots of areas there. That's crazy. Look, look. I see. It. There he is. And then there's the the rocks. Yeah. That's so cool. Look that up. I had no idea. There you go. One more fun fact. You know, the hidden Mickey stuff, right? Yes. Did you know, like, the most secret hidden Mickey ever is located in Fantasyland? Really? So if you're in the queue to Under the Sea, the Journey of the Little Mermaid. There is a Mickey that can only be seen at noon. If you're in the line at noon on November 18th, which is Mickey's birthday. So if you're standing in the right spot at noon in that line and the sun, the way the sun appears at noon on November 18th, it will reveal a hidden image of Mickey. That's so cool. It's probably the what? most secret and the and the toughest one to find. So you have to be there on the 18th on Mickey's birthday. You have to be there at noon. And the sun has yeah. to be out. Because what if it's raining that day? What if the sun's not out? Then you don't even get to see it. That's crazy. Do you, do you have a picture of that online somewhere? Are you looking I'm for it? I'm seeing all these rocks that are forced into Mickey shape. Hidden Mickey right. light. Those are my fun facts. Oh, look at that. that Wait, I there discovered. it is. Did That's you see so it? cool. So there it is. That's so cool. Like so it's not there, fully like him. Right. So if the sun on noon comes through and shines on the wall. Wow. That's it very is cool. A hidden Mickey. But it's only on his birthday, November 18th. That's really cool. At noon. You have to be there at noon. Okay. We've heard. In that spot. So book your tickets now. Use a Disney. Verify a Disney vacation planner to help you book yeah. your tickets to be there. Real. At noon. On that day. We should be there. We should. We should go make a special trip just to we do should. that. I agree. All right. Day and night. Fun facts for California? I don't have any fun facts for California. That's okay. I love California's. Here's a fun fact. It's not really a fun fact. It's my opinion. Fun opinion. <laughs> I like Disneyland's Fantasyland better than Disney World's Fantasyland. Okay. I love Disneyland's Fantasyland. It, it was. I, I thought it was better. Than the one in Florida, <laughs> even though it's smaller. All right. We assembled the last two areas. We talked about best time ago, day or night. There was it, you know, pluses and minuses, pluses and minuses. Talk about day or night of Fantasyland. I think, I think you're not okay. You're not gonna want to waste your precious night evening time on Fantasyland. Like, I think the only ride that gains because because the wait times 
are generally not that bad, with the exception of Peter Pan's Flight and Mine Train in California, or Florida, I mean, excuse me. It's not, there isn't that much to beat the crowds for, for no other reason than to just beat the crowd in general and not be there with the, when the crowd's there, right? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Going, going in the evening has the advantage of it being a little bit emptier, so it's easier to sort of maneuver, but I think that there's no logical, logistical advantage to going in the evening because there are only two rides that draw in that wait time, whereas Adventureland, Frontierland, um, Big Thunder Mountain's wait time can get long, Pirates can get long, Jungle Cruise can get long, Space Mountain and Buzz can get long, like... Um, Astro Orbiter even can get long in tomorrow in Tomorrowland. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to go with day for Fantasyland. That was a really backwards, very long, complicated way of saying I'm day. I think Fantasyland. it depends on your I think in the evening, families with small children, the children are tired, they depart sooner. Right. You know, than than people who are just there aren't a lot of attractions other than Seven Dwarfs Mine Train to do in Fantasyland in Florida that are big attractions for adults or older right. guests of the, of the park. So crowds in fantasy land after hours and it gets darker in the evening, typically are a little lighter, except for seven doors, mine train, but even I think then, in Disneyland, it does thin out incredibly. It does. And I think in Disneyland, it, it probably doesn't thin out relatively as much. Cause I think it's just a popular place for a lot of people to go to. Um, I, I, but I do think it depends if you have children. If you have children, the best time to go is during the day, right? Because in the evening, you can't really see a whole lot. Fantasy it's kind of dark. Yeah, it is dark. I mean, it's, there's not a lot of light. It's very poorly lit. Yeah, yeah there's not sure. a lot of lighting there. In, in you know, it's a good place to stand behind a it's castle for the like, fireworks. For but, sure. You know. But, like, all of the rides, at least in Florida, like, don't have, quote unquote, walls. Like, you don't have to enter a door to get on the ride vehicle. Like, they all open out into the street. And so I think that the thinking was like, oh, the lights from the rides will... Like the street, but that is, it doesn't work as well as I think it does. It's dark in Fantasyland. Right. So I, I think, look, I if think Fantasyland, if you're looking to avoid crowds, the best time to do Fantasyland is in the evening. But if you have small children, the best time to do Fantasyland is during the day so you can see everything. Because it yeah. really is. And there's a lot of characters that pop up throughout Fantasyland. It's got the better character meet and greets, you know, the walk arounds. So I don't know, I, I'm leaning more towards it during the day. It's probably yeah. a better time to visit Fantasyland than the evening. But certainly if you're looking yeah. to catch something like, especially like Peter Pan's Flight, you probably have a better time doing it in the evening. I just think it's more magical in during the day, even though it's super crowded. I think it's more magical during the day because you're able to really intake everything, right? right. And like, I think so much of um, what Fantasyland is, at least in Orlando, I've talked a lot about Orlando this episode, is... Um, show attractions and the show attractions close earlier than the rides and so it can be sort of like desolate in Orlando and Fantasyland at night like if it was if a Target parking lot was as desolate and dark as Fantasyland in Orlando at night I would not want to be in that Target parking lot no, it's, no, I hear it's, you. it's kind of eerie almost yep. to be there um, not not great but in California I think it's definitely worth it to be there at night um, because I don't think you're going to be able to beat the crowd either way. But um, it's been a while I'm, since we've been to California. It and we has, need to get back to Fantasyland soon. I agree. We really but I'm, love I think I'm, I'm team day for Fantasyland. Yeah, I am too. All right. All right. Any more things we want to add? We've assembled Fantasyland. Have we, have we assembled enough of it for people to get out there and enjoy themselves? I think we have. Yeah. I hope they've enjoyed this episode. I hope that what we've shared has helped make their next visit. Or their Heck first yeah. visit, even better. All right, Mimi. High five. How can they get in touch with us to tell us all that they want us to know about our show? You guys can send us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all at Disney Assembled. Or you can send us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Did I already say that? I just did. I think you did. I think you repeated wow. yourself. Wow. That's... Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can do this and you can do it again. <laughs> wow. You can do it twice. You can send us an email, DisneyAssembled at gmail.com. But if you guys want to support the show further, the link to our Tee Public Patreon, buy us a dole with all of that super fun stuff is on our website, DisneyAssembled.com. Make sure to check it out. Yeah. And if you haven't done so already, check out our YouTube channel, YouTube.com, Disney Assembled. Just do a search for us there. You'll enjoy it. We have some good content there. We've enjoyed ourselves. We put these episodes up, plus some other stuff. So 
check out the YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, they're probably the best thing you can do to help the show. And we, we hope you've enjoyed it enough to want to help us out. The best thing you can do, in addition to telling your friends and sharing the show on your own social networks, is to leave us a rating and review, especially if you're a listener on Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts is where most people download and listen to our show from. That is the platform that is most used for that purpose for us. So if you're listening to us, especially on Apple Podcasts, if you have not done so already, we would love it if you would certainly consider leaving us a five-star rating and writing a really nice review. Those reviews are really important because the shows with the most ratings and reviews typically get bumped up to the top of the list. And when people search for Disney podcasts, um, you know, those top rated shows appear near the top. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd like to be able to be one of those shows because we think. We think our show is great. We think it's wonderful. We, well, think, we actually know our show is great. Well, and, and we think it does a good job of creating joy, which is what we're here to do. Heck yeah. All right. All right. Hey, High five. Good job Boom. this week. Very good. All right, guys, we hope this week's show brought a smile to your face, some extra magic to your day, and that extra sprinkling of pixie dust to your week. Hope you've enjoyed it, and until next time, see see you real soon. soon. Gentlemen, please collect your belongings, watch your head and step, and take small children by the hand.